Hey teachers, it's hard to believe that it has been a year since so many people moved to online and virtual learning. And after a year of this, I'm sure a lot of your students are getting virtual learning fatigue and it is hard to keep them engaged and interested in the things that you're teaching. So today, what I wanna do is share a really fun virtual bingo game that you can play with students. And this bingo game is not hard to create. You can create all the cards for your students in under five minutes. So students love bingo games. And the great thing about a bingo game is you can play it with almost any subject, math, science, ELA, social studies. There's lots of different uses for it. The problem that I initially found with bingo games was that I had to go into Word, I had to create individual cards for each of my students so that they were different and then try to find a way to share them so we could all play online. And it was kind of difficult. So I've been experimenting with this for a little while and I have found a really easy way to do it. You can create 30 bingo cards within just a couple minutes and start playing straight away using two online tools. The first online tool that we're gonna use is myfreebingocards.com and we're gonna go on there and create a set of bingo cards for your class. So let's jump on my computer and I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, so here we are in myfreebingocards.com and there's lots of options that you can choose from. If you look at the different drop-down menus, you can choose from pre-made cards with numbers. I think if you click on kids, there's four and three and two letter words and ABCs if you work with younger students. But what I usually do is click on the bingo card generator because this will allow you to create your own bingo cards and customize them. Now the first thing you'll want to do is give them a title. So let's say I am doing uh, multiplication tables and we'll do twos, threes, and fours. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to type in all of your options. So I'm going to start by putting in my multiples of two and notice how I click enter and I put each option on a new line. So I don't put anything next to each other. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to speed this video up while I put in the multiples for two, three, and four. Okay, I've got all of my multiples in, so you can see it is just randomly putting ones on this sample here. Now the other things you can look at are the themes. Right now we've got stars and stripes. You can choose the, you can change this to anything that you want. Very easy to do. We'll just go with the classic. The grid size, now it's on automatic right now, but you can change this to anything that you want. So if you want a smaller grid, you can do that. So maybe working with younger students, it might be better to have smaller. If you work with older, it might be better to have bigger. Now, the last thing you wanna do, and this is very important for this to work, you can only have one card per page. So where it says cards per page, you want one large card. If you don't change that, it's not gonna turn out right. And then you'll click next step. And then it's gonna ask you how many cards do you need? The first 30 are always free. And if you're teaching, you probably won't need more than 30. So that should be good. Um, and then if you want more than that, you're going to have to pay. But do know that when you get your 30 free cards, each of those cards are going to look different. So they will not all be the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and download it to my computer now, and then we'll upload it into another program so that students can play virtually. So after you've got your bingo cards made and you have saved them as a PDF, you want to be able to share those with your students. That way you can all play together. And the best way I have found to do this is whiteboard.chat. So I'm gonna jump on the computer again and I'm gonna show you how to play bingo inside a whiteboard chat with the cards that you've just made. Now I'm not gonna go into all the minute details of the tools and features of whiteboard chat because we've got another video here on this channel all about everything you wanna know about using whiteboard chat. It is a great virtual whiteboard if you're teaching remotely. So the link to that video is in the description for this video. I definitely recommend that you check it out. But for right now, we're gonna jump on, I'm gonna show you how to upload those PDF cards 
how to share them with students, and then how you can all interact with them at the same time. All right, so as you can see, this is my PDF with my 30 different cards. And as I'm scrolling through, you will notice that each of the cards has different numbers organized in different ways. So they do not all look the same. So the next step is we wanna take these PDF bingo cards and we want to upload them into whiteboard.chat. So you're just gonna type whiteboard.chat into your browser. It's gonna bring you to this page. You're just gonna click on start drawing and then start teaching. And as you can see, this is your instructor board. So I'm just going to name this multiplication bingo. And then the next thing I want to do is upload that PDF as a bingo game. So to do that, I'm going to click on this icon here that says manage book. And when I click on it, I'm going to scroll down to upload bingo. It's going to pull up all the folders on my computer and I'm going to select the correct file. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay. So I've just uploaded my bingo cards. And when you look at this, you're going to notice just a random one appears. I've noticed it's always different. It's not necessarily always the first one or the last one. You can see this one is bingo card number 12. So it picked a random one from the middle, but you're not going to see the other ones around. And if you scroll through the boards, you're not going to see them. But trust me, all of those bingo cards are actually there, even if it doesn't seem like it. So before I show you how you're going to share this with students, I want to show you a couple of different ways that you can call out the question. So if you're playing multiplication bingo, you know, you're going to be calling out multiplication facts. So there's a couple ways that you can do that. Either you can click on video call and this will allow you to have a chat with your students similar to the way you would in Zoom or Google Meet. The other option that you can do is you can click on the text icon and you can type out the multiplication facts. So you could type out three times four, give it a minute for students to check their board and mark it if they have 12. Then you could do another one and you could type them out that way and students will see these appear on their board. So there's two different options for calling out the questions. The next thing that you are going to want to do is you're gonna to wanna to actually share this with students. So you're gonna click on invite and it gives you several different options for sharing. We talk about each of these options in the whiteboard.chat tutorial on this channel. But to keep it easy, I'm just going to copy and paste this link. Remember, you can share a link with students in an email, a chat. Uh, you can copy and paste it into Google Classroom. There's lots of options. So now I'm going to copy and paste this link in another browser so that you can see what happens from student view. So I'm just copying and pasting it. And this is a student's board and you can see they were given bingo card number five. And remember what I told you that if you type, students will be able to see, oops, I just drew a little bit, but students will be able to see what you've typed so they can see that there because I've already typed that in. Now I want to open it in another browser and show you what happens if another student puts in exactly the same link, even though it's the same link, they're going to get a unique board. So we can see this is student two and they got card number 13. So they got a different card from student number one who got card number five. Now, let me show you how do students respond. So you're calling out multiplication facts. How do they respond? What I recommend you do is just have them click the drawing tool and they can either put an X or they can cross them out when they have the correct answer. But I recommend just keeping it simple and doing it that way. Another reason why I love having students play bingo in whiteboard.chat is it provides this large white space here. So students can actually show their work if they're doing some kind of problem and you want them to show their work, they can do that. They can use the drawing tool again and show their work over here. Another option that can be very helpful is if they click on this palette icon at the top and then click the drop down menu and select manipulatives. There's all kinds of math manipulatives here that they can use to help them solve the problem. I'm going to scroll down because I love that if we're playing fraction bingo, there are fraction strips here that students can use to help them compare or add or subtract fractions. So I love that. And the nice thing about this is when you type anything on the instructor board, so if I'm calling out problems that way, 
all of the students in the class see that. But if my students are using their boards to show their work or they're using manipulatives, the other students in the class aren't seeing that. So if I go back to the student board, the student number two board, you can see that what I typed in is the teacher is there, but they don't see all the problem solving and manipulatives that student number one had used. And they don't see what that student has crossed off on their bingo card. So those are a couple really helpful tips. Now, whenever a student has bingo, what they're gonna do is they're gonna click the hand icon at the top of the screen and select raise hand. And then if we go back to the instructor board, you can see that student number two has raised their hand. And if you wanna check a student's work or you wanna to check to see if they actually have bingo at any time, all you have to do is click on grid view and it will pull up all of the boards that students are currently working on. So I can click on any of these. I can check to see if they actually have bingo. I can check to see their work as they're playing the bingo game to make sure they're solving correctly. If I need to jump in and help them, I can click join and I can walk them through some things, but just click on grid view and you can see exactly what's going on. And if you wanna go back to the regular view, just click single view. So this virtual bingo game is something great that you can do throughout the year to keep students engaged. And as you approach the end of the school year and you're looking for review activities for state testing, this is a great one that you can use. Like I said at the beginning of this video, you can use this for nearly any subject, especially when you have the ease of creating so many bingo cards quickly in whiteboard.chat. So I hope that you and your students enjoy this activity. And if you have any fun review games that you're playing with your students virtually right now to keep them engaged, go ahead and let me know in the comments for this video. I think we all could use some suggestions at this point. And then after that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every week and I don't want you to miss out on any of those. So until next time, happy teaching.